the dark side of AI. By now we are very much aware of the positive side of AI, of the many benefits that it can bring. And already it's capable of doing many astonishing things. Here I'm showing you a version of StyleGans, a form of generative adversarial network, that is able to use a database of faces in order to hallucinate new faces, faces of people who do not yet exist. And it does so with remarkable definition and accuracy. These are all very convincing images of faces. And yet they are of faces of people that do not yet exist. Indeed, there is a website you can go to called This Person Does Not Exist. And every time you refresh your browser, you will find a new face appearing, entirely convincing and of someone who does not yet exist. Astonishing. And in fact, in architecture, we can do something similar. This is the work of XCool, an AI and architecture startup in Shenzhen and China, in China. And they have produced this. It is a hallucination of buildings or forms of buildings that do not yet exist. Very similar, in fact, to the previous video that I was showing you. They are hallucinating buildings based on a data set of buildings, but generating novel versions, inter interpolating novel versions that do not yet exist. In fact, for a while they used to they they used to host a, a website. This building does not does not exist, where you could, again, every time you refresh your browser, generate a building, a former building, that does not yet exist. And there are other sites that have been produced. This cat does not exist, for example. So AI can be incredibly impressive and potentially incredibly useful. But is there a dark side to AI? I was first alerted to the astonishing potential of AI when boarding a plane some two years ago from Los Angeles International Airport, LAX. I was flying to Shanghai in China. And what astonished me was that as I approached the flight attendant with my boarding pass, she told me, I don't need that, just look at this screen. And as I approached the screen, it recognized me. It recognized me from everyone else on the planet, and it told me which seat I had assigned. That, to my mind, was simply astonishing. In some senses also, terrifying. AI can be terrifyingly capable. As a result of that, I changed my strategy in terms of the book I was writing. I initially was going to write about AI, and I found myself somehow compromised because AI seemed to be both good and bad. I then decided to divide the book into two separate books, one with a white cover about the positive potential of AI, architecture in the age of artificial intelligence, and introduction to AI for architects, and then one with a black cover the death of the architect, the demise of the architectural profession in the age of AI. These are in fact early versions of the cover and not the cover that we decided to go with. And indeed there are many others throughout history who have recognized the, 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 the potential of AI. In 1997, famously world champion chess player Gary Kasparov was beaten 
by AI, by Deep Blue. He reflected on this uh, and, and at one point pointed out that it was a great human achievement. This was an achievement of human beings. But at the same time, he was able to predict that actually AI would be able to surpass us. We just have to understand that everything that we know how to do, machines will eventually do better than us. Gary Kasparov. And there's a problem there. There's a problem there because if it can do things better than us, then potentially it will take our jobs away. As the late Stephen Hawking commented, we are at the most dangerous moment in the development of humanity. The rise of artificial intelligence is likely to extend job destruction deep into the middle classes with only the most caring, creative or supervisory roles remaining. Elon Musk goes even further. It's not just the jobs that we might lose. AI can be dangerous in itself. We need to be super careful with AI, potentially more dangerous than nukes. <clears throat> and indeed, Stuart Russell, who is one of the co-authors of the book on AI, Artificial Intelligence, A Modern Approach, has warned us of the dangers of AI. His most recent book, Human Compatible, Artificial Intelligence and the Problem of Control, points out the dangers of AI if it falls into the wrong hands. The question is, how do we control and contain AI? Russell himself was responsible for sponsoring a movie called Slaughterbots that very clearly articulated the danger of having autonomous drones that could murder people. Who is in charge of these slaughterbots? And of course, throughout history, there has been a suspicion of robots, of computation, of automation in popular culture. In the movie industry, Stanley Kubrick's 2001 and Space Odyssey is just one of a whole series of movies pointing out the danger of machines, computers, AI and automation that goes back to Metropolis and beyond. There is a danger in technology if we are to believe the movies. Likewise, there are other forms of expression, publications that look at the risk of, of, of situations that are enabled by an AI. Facial recognition, of course, makes AI very convenient for any culture of surveillance. And Shoshana, uh, Shoshana Zubrov, Zubov has written this bestseller, The Age of Surveillance Capitalism, The Fight for a Human Future at the Frontier of power. And facial recognition, as I have just pointed out, is astonishingly capable. It's able, of course, as we all know, to open our cell phones, our mobile phones, without us having to key in anything. It recognizes our faces. And that, of course, has led to memories of George Orwell's dystopian novel, 1984 where he predicts a culture of control dominated by Big Brother. Big Brother is watching you. Now, of course, there's another side of Big Brother that points towards maybe another shift in culture, a way in which maybe we have got beyond that fear of, of surveillance and are embracing it. The Big Brother, the Big Brother television show um, is all about human beings willing to be subjected to constant surveillance. They are, in effect, playing to the cameras, not hiding from the cameras, but playing to the cameras. And that speaks of an alternative mode of operation 
that is now emerging. In fact, the negative attitude towards surveillance began to sort of dissipate somewhat following this event in 1993. It was the abduction and murder of a young kid called Jamie Bulger by two slightly older kids. And it was only because the CCTV camera in this shopping mall in the UK outside a mother care shop, it was only because this CCTV camera was able to record the events that they were able to apprehend those responsible and convict them. And in many cases, people find themselves more reassured when there is some form of surveillance at hand. They feel protected sometimes by surveillance systems. Indeed, Slavoj Žižek most recently has pointed out that maybe we need to relinquish our fear of surveillance. We need to subscribe to a culture whereby we are being monitored. In the context of COVID-19, we need to know who has and has not got the virus. And there are many others also who support this particular view. Otherwise, progressive thinkers accepting the fact that surveillance may itself not be such a bad thing. 